This morning, I want to appreciate our senior pastors, Pastor Toy and uh, Pastor Bisi and Pastor Toy. They are not in service today, but they are also working behind scene. Amen. Amen. By God's grace, they will be here next Sunday. Hallelujah. This morning, October is our month of. Strive and what? And grow. and grow. Hallelujah. And I know since a prophecy has gone ahead of us concerning this month, those words will come into our lives and they will manifest forth in Jesus' mighty name. You shall strive and you shall grow in the name of Jesus. I'm asking to speak on thriving in the midst of scarcity. Thriving in the midst of scarcity. And throughout our text, because my time, I think I have less than 30 minutes. We are going to restrict ourselves to 2 Kings chapter 7, verse 1 to verse 10. Everything that we are going to discuss will come out of that scripture. Praise the Lord. I will quickly read verse 1 to verse 3. Then we continue to go along. Then Elisha said, Hear you the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord, Tomorrow at this time shall a measure of a fine flour be sold for what? A shekel. And two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of North Carolina. Amen. Amen. Then, then, a Lord on whom hand the king leaned answered the man of God. That man is in trouble. <laughs> and said, Behold, if the Lord will make would make windows in heaven. Might this thing be? Ah, challenging God. I pray we will not have such person in our midst in Jesus' mighty name. And he said, Behold, thou shalt see it, thou shalt see with thy eyes, but shall not eat thereof eat. I will stop there. Thriving in the midst of scarcity. I will start with what is thriving or what to thrive? What does that mean? Let me start with that. When we talk about to thrive or thriving, we are talking about to make progress in the face of adversity. To make progress in the face of what? Adversity. Exodus 14, 15. The Bible says the children of Israel were at the border of the Red Sea. And they've been roaming about that place. They don't know what to do. They don't know how to go. They decided they were going to turn back. You've been in that situation. You found yourself at that border. And you can't take another step forward. And you say, well, the only option for me is to do what? Is to turn back. And they turn back. What did they see? They saw who? The Egyptian rushing, coming violently. They cannot go forward. Backward going is 
becomes impossible. Praise the Lord. Thriving in the midst of what? Scarcity. And they did what? And they began to grumble, which is what we, we, most of us we do. We begin to grumble. We begin to start accusing God. Start telling, telling God, uh, I'm okay where, where, where I was. I would have preferred to stay where I am. Now you took me here and you cannot complete it. But the word came unto Moses. The word came unto Moses. Exodus 14, 15. And the Lord said to Moses, Wherefore cried thou out unto me, Speak unto the children of Israel, that they should do what? Go forward. Hallelujah. God was telling him, The authority belongs to you now. Whatever says will come to pass. So tell the children of Israel, It is not me telling you what to say. But tell them whatever you want to see happening. Hallelujah. And what did Moses say? Moses said, okay, it is time to do what? Go forward. Striving means what? Go forward. So I declare unto you today, if you have started too long in, on that mountain, in that position, in that place, it is time for you to move forward. In the name of Jesus. And the Bible recorded. As they lift up their legs and step forward, what happens? An intercontinental ballistic missile was released. The Red Sea began to depart, begin to open. I said it the other time. I will say it again. When we get to heaven and we ask God, how did that happen? I want to know. I don't know if you want to know, but I want to know. The rest he opened and there was an express road. Yeah. Hallelujah. We are talking about what? Thriving in the midst of challenges. When we talk about when we talk about when we talk about scarcity, we are not restricting it to scarcity alone. We are also talking about challenges of life. We are talking about battles that we are going through. You are very rich. Even if they look into your account. You have about $50,000 there. But you are a poor man. Whereas somebody is just looking for $100 and he is satisfied. But you have what? Over fifty thousand dollars in your account. And what happens? And you are still a what? A poor man. That is what we are talking about. When you are thriving in the midst of scarcity. They had a problem. And they called upon God. And God answered them. Don't let me waste a lot of time there. When we talk about thriving, we are talking about flourishing. Psalm 92, verse 13. Those that are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the court of the Lord. We are talking about flourishing. Thriving means you are flourishing. When other people are not. When other people are crying. The economy is too hard. But you, the Lord is making way for you. You went to the grocery. And as soon as you pack all those things. Somebody just stepped in and said, I will pray. For, I, will, I will pay for you. And you, and, you, and you begin to wonder, what did I do to merit that? Or you drove to the fast food, whatever. And then they said, the person in front of you have already paid. That is what we are talking about. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We are talking about prospering. You prospering. The Bible talks about Joseph, Genesis 39. Joseph was in the prison and he was still doing what? He was still what? Driving in the prison. Whereas other people were with him there and they were doing what? 
suffering. That is what we are talking about. Irrespective of where you find yourself, you are different. That is what we are talking about. That is what we are talking about. Driving. Let's quickly go to what is scarcity. We are talking about deficiency. We are talking about deficit. We are talking about draft. We are talking about famine. We are talking about insufficiency, lack, paucity. We are talking about poverty. We are talking about shortage. We are talking about wants. We are talking about lacuna, lack. Praise the Lord. That is what we are talking about when we talk about scarcity. We are talking about battles that you have been fighting and fighting that are not leaving you. We are talking about anything that is not working for your goodness. That is what we are talking about. That is what we are talking about. But I have a word for you tonight. First Chron uh, Colossians 1.16 says, For by him, the man we are dealing with, the father that, that, that bet us, our maker, our creator. Colossians 1, 16. Says, For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether they are by thrones, dominion, principalities, powers, all things were created by him and for him. So if your father owns all things, your portion is to do what? Is to do what? to be thriving. Our portion is to what? To be thriving. And we shall thrive in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Because of my time, um, because I was given a time, I don't want to pass that time. Praise the Lord. We are going to the secret of thriving. Secret of what? Thriving. You will see that we have not even dealt with 2 Kings chapter 7. Secret of thriving in the midst of scarcity. All those pictures that you will be seeing, all those slides, they have meanings. I tried as much as possible to bring out meanings out of them. Number one, seek the world. Number one, the secret of what? Of thriving in the midst of what? Of scarcity. The secret of thriving in the, of getting victory in the midst of battle is what? Seek the word. The word. The word. That word could be prophetic word or what? Or scriptural word. It could be prophetic word or scriptural word. Our prophetic word was what happened in verse 1 of this chapter. Then Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. What? The word of who? The Lord. Thus says the Lord, Tomorrow about this time, shall a measure of a fine flour be sold for one shekel. I believe you knew all what was happening in that country. Some people gathered together and came to fight war with them. And they blocked them. They, they, they erect a blockade around that nation for a lot of time. So they could not get food in. They could not get food out. It got to a point that there were no more food. They started killing, and they've killed all the animals. And they started doing what? Begin to kill human beings to eat for people to survive. So that was what's going on. And everything was very, very, what? Expensive. Even if you have money to buy or see anything to buy. But the word came. The word did what? Came. If you must thrive in this season, you need the word to go ahead of you. When you have a word that has gone before you, you will step into that word, and when everybody is feeling cold, you will be feeling, you will be jogging. Because 
a word has gone ahead of you, like Elisha did. He said, by this time tomorrow, I buy that box of rice from Sam's. Or, let me say that pack of water that they were selling for $2.99, about 40 packs before. It's, over five, it's almost $5 now. Praise the Lord. And we all knew what is going on. Things are, you know. But the man of God just, just came and said, by tomorrow, that water will be sold for 50 cents. <laughs> because there is a word, a word that is coming forth, telling you that in this month of October 2022, you will thrive and you will grow. Yeah. You will thrive and you will grow. In the name of Jesus. So in the midst of scarcity, for you to thrive, you must have a word, a word. A word. Because Psalm 119105 says that the word is a lamp unto what? Unto our feet and a light unto our what? Unto our path. If that word comes for, if you have a word when you are going to marriage, no matter the storms, that word will stand you. I can tell you that. If you have a word that will prophesy ahead of you in that business and storms comes, when that storm comes, that word will become a barrier, a shield that will cover you. That no matter what happened, Job was an example. Notwithstanding all the things that he lost, the Lord did what? Bless him multiple times back. Because a word went ahead of Job. I pray that your word will not tarry in the name of Jesus. That in this time of recession, deficit is growing. People are complaining. Some people call me from one country like that and say, our deficit is so and so and so. I say, it's not only you. Look at UK. Look at UK. Look at United States. It is the world phenomenon. I say, but, but, they that know their God, they shall be strong, but they shall do what? Exploit. That's what the word of God says. And we shall be strong, and you and me shall do what? Exploit in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Number two, boldness and courage. Boldness and courage. Secret of thriving in the midst of what? Scarcity. In the face of battle, boldness and courage. Second Kings chapter 7 verse 4. 2 Kings 7, verse 4. 2 Kings 7, verse what? Verse 4. I will start from verse 3. And there were four leprous men at the entrance in, of the gate. And they said to one another, why sit we here until we die? Verse 4 now. If we say we will not enter into the city, then the family in the city, the family is in the city, and we shall die there. And if we sit still here, we shall die also. Now, therefore, let us fall into the host of Syrians. If they save us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall also do what? Also die. And they rose up in their twilight. Verse 4 showed us a picture of some people. They were part of that country that were in famine. They've not, those guys have not eaten for almost two weeks. You know what that means. They were, and they, they, and they are special people because of who they are, because of what they have. They are special people that are relegated to the barest minimum. 
when they are going to give food, they will come last. But in God's own plan, your status does not matter. Wherever you are coming from does not matter to God. What matters to God is that you know him and that you are connected to him and that you have confessed him as your Lord and your Savior. That is it. So these four men decided that, well, the only option we have is if we go back inside the city, they don't even want us there. We will we, we die because they won't give us anything. If we stay here, we will die. Well, there is war in front of us. Let us go inside the war. And if anything happens, we know that we will do what? We will do what? We will die. That is what? They took the extreme option. They took what? The what? The extreme option of doing what? Displaying boldness and courage. Let us go into the place. We want to eat. There is possibility of them giving us food. And there is possibility of them not giving us food. You have been in that situation. That office where you know that your qualifications have passed them in that office. But you have gone there many, many times and they have asked you, we don't want you. And you, and in another bigger position now opens. I said, where I have gone that they didn't give me that? How can they give me that? But if you are a child of God, these people are telling you today, don't look about the past. Forget about the past. Launch into the beginning, the future that is in front of you. And be bold and be courageous. And these people went into the camp of the Syrians. Praise the Lord. Boldness is what we need in the time of what? Scarcity. You need to bold in taking a drastic decision because a word has gone ahead of you and you are working in consonant with that word. You will find results in Jesus' mighty name. Esther chapter 4 verse 16 says, Go, gather together all Jews that are present in Shoshan, and fast ye for me, and neither drink or drink three days, night or day. I also and my maiden will fast likewise. And so will I go in unto the king, which is not according to the law. If I perish, I do what? I perish. Boldness and courage. Those guys says that if we perish going into the camp of the Syrians, we are what? We perish. We take that. That is who you are. That is who I am. That is who God created us. That is what he has deposited in us. That we can stand and say yes with damn the consequences. The king cannot be approached unless the king asks you to come. But he says that if I perish, I perish. I must go and approach the king. How many people are ready to go and approach whoever it is? That monster, that mountain, that thing that is standing on our way. And speak to it. Hear the word of the Lord. It is time for you to disappear. Leave that thing in us, that sicknesses, whatever it is. If you perish, you perish. But in God, you will not perish. Because Esther is an evidence. She said, if I perish, and I perish. And she went to the king. And the king said, oh, come, 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 come. You are, you, are, you are chosen. You are sorted. You are distinguished. You are elevated. <laughs> You are set apart. You are chosen. You are different. Come, 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 come. That is who we are. Don't be afraid of them. The Bible says, fear not what they fear. And compare yourself not with another person. Because what you carry is different from what they carry. You carry the king of kings and the love of Lord. You carry the ancient of days. You carry the God, the Father, the God, the Son, and the God, the Holy Spirit. Three in one. And you are afraid. 
No. Number three. Because of my time. Know your twilight. Hallelujah. Know what? Your twilight. Second Kings. Chapter what? Second Kings 7, 5. And they rose up in twilight to go unto the camp of the Syrians. And when they were come to the utmost part of the camp of the Syrians, behold, there was no man there. For the Lord has made the host of the Syrians to hear a noise of chariots, a noise of horses, even the noise of a great host, that they said to one another, Lo, I now find where people get that low. I, use, I see people using it all, all over. The king of Israel has hired against us the king of the Hittites and the king of Egypt to come upon us. Therefore, they arose and fled in the what? In the twilight. Hallelujah. <laughs> There's a lot in this verse. There's a lot in that verse. They arose in the twilight. They arose in the twilight. You must understand when you are supposed to set out to battle. You don't just go into battle without knowing when your opponent is weak, when your opponent is sleeping, when your opponent has, 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 gets drunk. You need to know all those information. That is what in the military they call recon reconnaissance. They go for intelligence. Praise the Lord. In the spiritual battle too, you need to understand the time of action. You will need to understand what? The time of action. The twilight is the transition between the day and the night. The transition between the day and the night. It could be in the morning, it could be in the evening. Depending on how you look at it. But you must understand your twilight. Know your right time to proceed. That is what they did. They waited after they have decided. They didn't just jump out in the afternoon and jumping towards them. They waited till the perfect time, which is the twilight. And as they step out, something begin to happen in that camp. They begin to hear full step of four men becoming four million in that midst. Can you believe it? Four men, four leprous men that were just walking. They didn't have power. They have not eaten for two weeks. But as they carry one leg, the ground began to shake in the camp of the enemy. That will be your portion in the name of Jesus. As you carry one leg and second one, your enemy begins to sink in the name of Jesus. The Bible says as they were, they were coming, approaching them, everybody was scattering. If you see them running, I saw them when they were running. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> ah, the Bible recorded that they were just flinging away their clothes on the road. Why? Because the Lord amplified the four leprous men and they became a multitude. A multitude to a thousand. A thousand to a million. And by the time they got there, the Bible says they find what? Nobody. But they knew when to proceed, when to go. Most of us, God will tell you, okay, take that place. Take that road. Ah, God, this is the main, main road I always pass through every time. 
God says, take that road. He knows where he's, when he's asking you to take that road. But we will argue. Me, I'm one of them that argues. I, I argue because I say, ah, God, I know. Okay. I, there are times I take it, there are times I don't. And then I will now see the traffic in front and say, oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. They knew when to step out. Know your twilight. It is very important. Because at the same time that you're stepping out in your twilight, the other people's twilight is confusion in their camp. Because as they were stepping out, the same time, these people began to run away the same time in their own twilight. Because power past power. Power does what? Pass power. And you have power in you. And the power we carry pass any other powers. Because the God that gave us that power is the one that created all those powerless power. Hallelujah. So know your twilight. First Samuel 30, 17. And David smite them from the twilight even to the evening or the next day. David went to war. He did not just jump into war. He started the war in his own twilight. Know your twilight. Know that at your twilight, that is when you need to go out, go on your knees, and go and destroy and scatter every plan against you, your family, your children, your, your marriage, your what? Your work. Know it. Know it that at your twilight, you should not be sleeping. You should be awake. And the Lord will reveal your twilight to you in Jesus' mighty name. Number four, what is in your hand? I love this. What is in your hand? Second Kings 7, 18, 19. Elisha was the center focus of this chapter. You might have thought that it was the, lepro, the, the four leprous people or the king or even the children of Israel. No, Elisha was the center focus of this. And I will prove it to you. Take whatever you do very seriously. Your work, the work of your hand, take it very seriously. Focus and be committed. Ecclesiastes 6, 9, 10 says, whatever, whatsoever that your hand findeth to do, do it with what? With your might. When Bible says might, that means do it with every vibe, every power that you have in you. Do it diligently. Do it the way you know that when they want to give anybody any reward, it is you that they will come and meet. That what you have done is totally different from other people. So in your place of work, the work of your hand, do it very well. Do you know that if Elisha has not prophesied concerning the family, he would have died in that family. And if Elisha is not in tune with God to give him that direction, what would have happened? He would have also died in that world, in that world, famine. That's why I said, what is in your hand? What is the work you do? Do it diligently. Do it in the best way you know you can do it. You are not looking for man's praise. You are looking for what? God affirmation. And that was what happened. The back in that scripture, verse 18, verse 19, verse 20, now I had to come back and talk about who? Elisha. To represent his prophecy concerning that man, we are coming to talk about that man. Ah, my time. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Barriers to striving in the midst of scarcity. Praise the Lord. I will just take number one and then run through the remaining. Number one, 
barriers to thriving in the midst of scarcity. Pride and a forward person. Pride or a forward person. And we see that in verse 2 of that scripture. Verse 2 of that scripture. Verse 2 of that scripture says, Then a Lord on whom hand the king leaned answered the man of God and said, Behold, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, might this thing be? When you see people like this, Dissuade yourself from them. The pride people. Because he has access to the king, he thinks he has arrived. If you see people like that, if they are your friend, run away from them. Because before the king does anything, you say, I go and call me so, 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 and so. So he thinks the relationship he has, he can use it as an affront to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. If you see people like that, the Bible says, do not sit in their council. Do not even co beat or mingle with them. People like this, they are disaster ready to what? To happen. And disaster happened to him. I'm very sorry. It's unfortunate. People like that, people that habitually are disposed to disobedience and what? And opposition. All what he said was opposition to a living world that was on a mission to manifest. And he reaped the repercussion. Proverbs 16, 18. Price goes before what? Destruction. And is the spirit before a fall. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> this type of people run away from them. They might be, they are the ones coming to tell you. That your husband. That your husband. Yeah, to, you too love him too much. You know that? Yeah, you give him too much respect. Run away from them. Run away from them. Bible says, husband, love your wife as Christ loved the church and did what? And died. So a man should be ready to do what? And he did not stop there. He said, wife. What? Love your husband. Honor your husband. Submit to your husband. Submit. Submit means submit. Submit means it. Is there anywhere that it, that it says comma or any other thing? It says commit. Submit means submit. Final. But husband, ready to do what? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Barrier to driving in the midst of what? Scarcity. Run away from people that are proud. Unbelief. The king, that king. We didn't read it. The king. If you hear what came out of the king, when those four leprous people came and tell them that miracle has happened, the king was still demonstrating what? Unbelief. Unbelief will not make us to do what? To, to thrive if we don't deal with it. Fear. Even when they were told to go and verify it, they were still what? Afraid. People they were talking say, okay, let's send two to go and see. Let's, you know, fear. Lastly, greed. 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 Verse 7, verse 8, verse 9, uh, uh, chapter 7, 8, 9. Greed. The four leprous people, when they entered and they saw food on the ground, when they saw gold, trinket, everything, they begin to do what? 
They begin to carry. They carry. They ran. They went to go and hide it. They came back. They carry. They went to go and hide it. They came back. And then I said, oh, oh. We have to. Ah, this is not good, though. This is not good, though. Ah, we cannot allow this thing to be with us alone. Let us go and get other people. They were greedy at, at, at first. Greediness comes in. When we see things and we want to do what? Make it our own alone. The spirit that dwells in Christ is the spirit of love that shares with one another. Praise the Lord. If you see something that will elevate your brother and sister, call them. Present it to them. Don't you see our brethren from India? Don't you see our brethren from other places? Five people will, 15 people will be living in the house. They are planning because the next thing you will see that those 15 people, one after the other, they will begin to buy their own house. And they are going and they are going. And they are buying companies. And they are going and they are going. See, let our own people do buy one company together. They will love themselves. I'm not going to say the other one. <laughs> Praise the Lord. What we need is the love of Christ. Greed will do what? We aid scarcity when we are supposed to be striving. And that will not be a portion in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Father, we are grateful. Thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord, for your people that have heard your word. If you are here this morning, everything that I've said, you'll be wondering, what is he saying? If you have not given your life to Christ, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and as your Savior, what that means is that if you have not believed in your heart that Jesus died for you and confess it with your mouth, because every one of us that is born of a woman the mere fact that you came out of a woman, you inherited sin. We all inherited it. And so a man has to come to come and wash your sins away. And that is Christ Jesus. And that is the reason why he has taken your sin and given you salvation of life. That is the reason why if you are here today, you have not given your life. You have not said, Jesus, here am I. I want to know you more. I want to follow you. I want you to just wave your hand. Wave your hand this morning. If you want to give your life to Jesus, it's as simple as that. If you want to give your life to Jesus, just wave your hand. Wave it, wave it, wave it, wave it. Father, we are grateful for as many that are waving their hands. I pray that the grace of salvation, the power of salvation will come upon them and they will become a new person. The Bible says, therefore, if you are in Christ, you are a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are new. I declare the newness of God unto you. In the name of Jesus, as you have waved that hand, your hand will never go down again. In the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you. Lord, we give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen.